Hey guys, so this is my review on the Moto X 30 Pro. You could also maybe couple in with that the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, which is basically this, uh, but the Edge 30 Ultra has been launched globally. This has been launched in China. This in China on uh, Gistop you can get for $749, uh, 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of internal storage, uh, which works out but over, just over 600 pounds. <clears throat> if you want the Moto Edge 30 Ultra in the UK, you can get it on the Motorola website for 749 pound, and that's the 12 gig and 256 gig of internal storage. And obviously it's got the global ROM there as well, which obviously a lot of people would prefer than using a Chinese ROM, which I've been doing, but to be fair, I've actually managed uh, quite well on this. The overall design and build quality is very good in my opinion. Um, it's got a rounded OLED display, 1080p panel. It's a 144 hertz refresh rate as well. So flagship specs, OLED 144 hertz. Um, it's only 1080p though, it's not quad, uh, quad HD. The back, superb, I love that back. On that you get the black or the white version but i've been using this with the case because the back is very slippery so i've been popping that in there and i haven't really been feeling the beauty that the back actually gives off this adds more texture and a bit more grip though if you are worried, worried about dropping it now in my 72 hour review with this i didn't really go much into detail about uh, the battery uh, the battery is 4,610 milliamps, so quite a fairly large battery, 125 watt fast charging. It does charge super fast as well. I think it's about 20 minutes to uh, 100%. Um, and you also get 50 watt wireless charging as well. Again, flagship specs. Now, battery life on this has been absolutely excellent in my opinion. It's got the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which plays a massive part, in my opinion, with battery life. Uh, I did send a tweet last night. Um, I had like 41% battery left and it was time to go to bed. I had about five hours screen on time and just under really 50% battery left. So battery life on this baby is fantastic. So I mentioned the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip that's in here, the, the newer version uh, from Snapdragon. And performance wise, I've not had any problems at all uh, viewing uh, content, gaming on this 6.67 inch OLED display um, has been great, it really has. So if you're worried or concerned about performance in any way, shape or form, um, it's, it's absolutely fine. And with that 144 hertz refresh rate, you really will have no problem in the performance department, handles gaming absolutely fine and navigating, browsing, no bother at all. Now, the software on this bad boy, Android 12, I still haven't had any updates as of yet, uh, no updates at all. Apparently there are rumors that this will be getting Android 13, so uh, I do hold out hopes for that. Uh, you can check the updates manually on this, like any other phone, but it says, everything looks good now, although this is a Chinese ROM, um, like I said in my video, my 72 hour review video, the software is reminds me very much of Pixel software and the amount of Chinese apps is very, very minimal on this device. So that's good. And obviously with the global ROM, you're not gonna get any of that at all. So I imagine the experience to be even, to be even better. Optical fingerprint sensor on this has been one of, most favorite ones I've used to be fair. I'm not really a big fan of under display fingerprint sensors. I do prefer them on the back or maybe nowadays integrated into the power button on the right hand side of the device instead of using under display fingerprints. But this has been very accurate and quite rapid as well to be fair. Still better than the Pixel 6 Pro in that department. I really like the speakers. I've stressed this a couple of times in my videos um, the speakers are really good on this. Yeah, speakers are great.
So the main attraction for the X30 Pro and the Edge 30 Ultra is the whopping 200 megapixel sensor. Now I've done about three camera videos on this. A 200 megapixel video uh, with a shot with the 9x16 crop. I've done an overall camera review. I'll include these in the cards as well or the end screen if you want to take a look at that. And I also did a video testing the 2 megapixel sensor with the 3 by 4 aspect ratio. Uh, so I've tested lots and lots on this camera. Now there are issues with autofocus at 4K60 and 1080p60. It seems that anyway, anything with 60 FPS in, autofocus is either non-existent or very slow. Uh, more detail in the camera reviews if you do want to, uh, to see that. 1080p30 and 4K30, the autofocus seemed fine. Um, so that's something to consider. But hopefully they're going to release some updates uh, which should rectify that issue. Uh, and other than that, the video quality I think is very good for this phone. Uh, the, obviously the big selling point is a 200 megapixel sensor. Uh, there were some sort of issues shooting in 9x16. But when you knock it down to 3x4, this is excellent. There's no gimmick to it at all. Uh, as you can see in my videos uh, in more detail. The, the, the pictures were excellent. You could crop right in as well. It still uh, maintains that uh, the detail. So I don't think this is a gimmick like some people are saying. Um, it's a piece of hardware and it's working. Whether Samsung do it better is another thing. We don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but it, it is very, very good, guys. Now the overall price of this, as I said earlier, £749 in, in the UK. £749. Now, obviously, if you do know me, I am a big Pixel fan. My daily driver, or to be fair, I haven't used it much because I've been testing all these other phones. So, because when I test a phone, I completely jump into it, install everything, and that's my daily driver for a week or two. But this is my main daily driver, the Pixel 6 Pro. And if you shop around, you can get this around 750 on Amazon. And the camera system, I prefer on this compared to that um, flagship as well. So that's something to consider. If you've got £749 and you're looking at both of these, um, I personally would opt for Pixel 6 Pro. Um, but then if we're not comparing, this is still a great phone. If you're not on, in its own right, it's still a very, very good phone, guys. If you do like Motorola's, this is probably the best that I've used of Motorola's. Uh, for a very long time. I've used some of the Edge, Motorola Edge in the past, I think a year or two ago. Not very excited about it, but this has done fantastic. I've really enjoyed using this over the past couple of weeks. I mean, this can shoot at 8K, but it's very wobbly. Can't see many people actually using 8K. Uh, we have a 50 megapixel ultra wide, which does produce some excellent ultra wide shots as well. And we have a two times optical zoom as well. Uh, you can shoot at two times optical only at 1080p 30 frames per second. So you can't do any two times optical in 4K or 1080p 60. It's a bit disappointing, so you're very limited to where you can use ultra wide video and two times optical, uh, just only at 1080p 30. Uh, the portrait mode as well, which obviously uses the telephoto, you can get some very good results uh, with the portrait mode. Portrait mode is excellent. And then on the front, Front-facing camera, 60 megapixels. Uh, you can shoot at 4K 30 on the front here. There's stabilization. So I do think the front camera, um, I suppose if you look at it, the front camera in terms of video and photo perform better than the rear until they get the autofocus issue fixed on this device. Um, I can't really speak for the global ROM because that, be, that might be better. Uh, but for the Chinese ROM that I have here, there's some autofocus issues. So that is it. I'm going to wrap my review up for the X30 Pro. Um, definitely a phone that you should consider. You should, should consider it very, very carefully. Uh, hopefully the updates are released soon to rectify them problems. And in its own right, it is a very good smartphone with a very good camera system. And that's it. Oh, and excellent, excellent loudspeakers, guys. And a nice design, which some people might think is a little bit dated. Uh, the curved screens and stuff. I've seen this so many times with Samsung and um, uh, Huawei as well. 
but so many people have different tastes so this appeals to me still and it will appeal to a lot more people as well so that's it guys that's the x30 pro review i'll include links to this in the description below i'll include links to this on giz top and i'll also include links to the edge 30 ultra as well uh, any questions pop them down below smash that like button and if you enjoyed this content and want to see more like this then do consider subscribing thanks very much for watching i'll see you soon bye bye